So this is a modular V. Now we're not really going to talk about signal flow because there is no signal flow. You get to define the signal flow by your patch connections. As you can see right now in this preset, all these patch connections define what the sound is going to sound like. Now there are so many modules on this system, we're going to look at each and every one of them one by one in detail. Not all of them in this course, but we're definitely going to cover the essential ones and save the more advanced ones for a later course. Let's have a quick look at the interface. Right up top here, you can click to open the preset browser, a very detailed preset browser with tons and tons of presets. If you know the name of the preset you're looking for, you can just type it in here, or you can narrow down your search by selecting different types. Let's load this one in. Another amazing thing about this software recreation is that you get polyphony. So if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, over here you can see the polyphony option. It can go all the way up to 32 voices. So this is something that was impossible on the real hardware modular. Going back into the preset browser, so we have the different types, you have different banks, you can choose characteristics, and you also can set up playlists. There's one already here made by Artoria, and these can be browsed through with program change messages. Once you select a preset, there's some information on the right over here regarding the designer and some comments relating to the sound. If you want to start the search again, you can hit that X button. Now this time I'm going to click on sequence. Now we have a list of all the presets that are under the category of sequence. We can look at presets with specific characteristics. So I'll select ensemble here. And now we're only seeing the presets that have the ensemble tag. Let's close out of the preset browser, audition the sound. If I scroll back up, you can see most of the core of the sound is based on the modules in this upper section. All right, so let's look at all the modules that we get. So in this upper section, you can see here we have three filters, an LFO, six envelopes, a trigger delay, and another filter with a noise section. So mainly filtering and modulation. In this middle section, you have your main oscillators. So you get nine oscillators and three drivers. We'll talk about what those drivers are later on. There's another LFO here. And then there's two VCAs with envelopes attached. Some control voltage input and outputs in this middle section here. Over here, we have the sequencer, a very fancy sequencer. We'll save this for the advanced course. The fixed filter bank a dual delay effect and chorus effect. Moving further down, there's the keyboard controllers. We saw the unison option a little while ago. Then there's a very advanced key follow section. Quick access to your VCA1 and VCA2 envelopes. There's a global volume and tuning control. There's a sound controllers section. And quick access to the filter cutoff on the three filters. And lastly, at the bottom, we have the virtual keyboard. Now, whenever you adjust a control on the synth, for example, if I play with the frequency over here, the actual value will be displayed in the bottom left corner over here. So this is very helpful if you want to be very, very precise with values. Again, something you could never do on an actual hardware modular. This will also help us understand the synth better. For example, in this VCA section, the slope section seems a bit vague, but if we click and drag the dial, we can see what the parameter is actually labeled, and that can help us understand it a bit better. Now, in terms of patch connections, it's actually quite easy. You can click and drag out of any input or output, and there'll be a virtual cable attached to the mouse, and then you can only drop it on inputs or outputs that have the red circle you will not be allowed to drop that connection anywhere else. 
This is to ensure that you do not make wrong connections like connecting an input to an input or an output to another output. Now there are also some internal connections that do not involve using a patch cable. This makes things a little bit easier. So for example, if you look at the oscillator section, if you want the keyboard to control this, you just select it over here. So no patching required for that. Another internal connection is related to the trigger options. Like here you can choose from this list what will trigger the envelope. So generally it's a pretty easy interface to navigate. The only problem is you'll find yourself scrolling up and down a lot. Alright, in the next few tutorials, we'll look at the oscillator section in a little bit more detail.